Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. Creative Assembly yesterday released an article about Troy's upcoming release on Steam and how the game was built with modding capabilities always in mind, which no doubt is a very cool thing. The article introduces Sofia senior technical advisor Radoslav Borisov in an interview style and talks about how the game is built with a if we can, let's make it moddable philosophy by relying on a wide range of scripts that can be easily edited and some hands-on tools that can be made readily available to potential modders. All very good stuff. But this got me thinking, what will modders actually be able to do, and how does this compare to previous Total Wars? Given the lack of mods for Troy on Epic, which let's all agree was due to the game being on Epic, this is a big area of focus for the game on Steam and definitely worth exploring. So in this video, I'll be running through what we know about modding a Total War Saga Troy compared to previous Total Wars, what sort of mods we can expect to be made for the game on Steam, and why all of this is very exciting. Let's get started! Back when Rome and Medieval 2 first came out and modders flocked to create some of the best mods we've ever had, like Roma Serectum or Third Age Age, there is no doubt in my mind they wished there was more that they could mod in the games and that it could be easier to mod. There was, and to a degree even today, a lack of support from CA for modding in the games. Modders had to make do with spending months, hell, years of time and energy to make their mods because there was no easy way to make them, and what they could make clashed with what the game was made for, causing bugs and other issues. Scroll to 2021 and we have Rome Remastered, a highly moddable version of the original. We have the Warhammers, which have literally thousands of mods, and we have Troy, which though not as popular, is actually the most moddable total war ever made. Now technically nothing about this CA article is anything we don't already know about Troy. There are a few good things peppered here and there that are nice to haves, but every modder out there already knows that every new Total War game that comes out is even more moddable than its predecessor, and Troy is definitely no exception. This article is essentially a promotional piece for modders out there to get the game on Steam when it comes out and start flexing their modding muscles, make some great mods that keep Keep the playing audience on the game, keep things fresh and interesting, and for the most part, that's what makes most Total Wars replayable. I was speaking to one of my subscribers today who calls himself the Duke, a modder who created the End Times mod for Warhammer 2 by the way, so shout out to him, and check out the mod linked below. And he was saying that while no Total War has ever taken a step back on moddability, it definitely has been a slow grind to get to where Total War games are today. What modders talk about first and foremost is depth and width, which respectively means how easy it is to mod a game and how much can be modded in it. Every Total War game does these two things to varying degrees, usually by getting one thing right and the other wrong, but modern Total Wars have been nailing both on the head. Troy has the most potential of any Total War game we've had so far. It's not limited by the Games Workshop's latest Warhammer IP decisions. It comes with a historical mode and a fantasy mode, so it'll be attracting all sorts of modders, and it's set in a time period very different and interesting compared to other Total Wars we've had so far. And so much about it will be moddable, guys. CA has made available a number of tools that modders can use to make it all happen, including a database visual editor, a resource exporter, a battle map editor, a whole tool just for creating and editing units and export plugins, all of these and more will come together to give modders the best tools they can have to make modding Troy as easy as possible, and through these tools we can expect a lot. From individual unit stats, all the way to perhaps expanding the campaign map to include Egypt, adding new settlements, and creating brand new battle maps, Troy will have it all. The only area I would not expect extensive changes for is the AI, which, as every Total War game has, is too hard coded into the game for modders really to touch. We already have a good idea of what kinds of mods we can expect from Troy as well on the Epic Store with the Radius Overhaul mod, which adds rebalancing, reworked economy, reskinned units, and more, or mods that affect specific things like faster research, lessening auto-resolve casualties, etc. But let's be honest, the game wasn't exactly that popular on Epic, 
and Epic itself is nowhere near as popular as Steam. So I guarantee, everyone would guarantee that the modding scene in Troy will absolutely boom as soon as it launches on Steam next week. We also know that the new content will likely be mainly focused on the Mythos side of things. Historical mode will get unit bodyguards and some other minor changes, but nothing as drastic as whole new missions like in Mythos, brand new units, or massive campaign or battle map changes. I'm hoping that through modding, the historical mode can get some love. For example, we could get a Bronze Age mod that transforms the campaign map to include the southern coast of Anatolia, the Levant, and of course Egypt, so we can have factions like the Hittites, the Mycenaeans, Ancient Egypt, perhaps with the campaigns leading up to an endgame of the Sea Raiders invading the area, collapsing local civilization in an Attila-style loot and raise to the ground. This could easily translate to a Mythos mode as well, where modders could add new unique monsters, new gods that have different powers, benefits and building chains and more the possibilities are endless i'm talking about overhaul mods here of course mods that rebalance add new features like population politics new units new factions new settlements and that turn the game into something brand new and amazing i mean who knows we could even get a new lord of the rings mod with loads of brilliant looking monsters and fabulous story missions but we'll also get more minor mods that affect things like expansion of the new administration mechanic, that tweak AI bonuses, for example, that work in the background, or we might get expanded settlement building slots, or even, dare I say, naval units and battles. So much is possible with Troy. The modability of the game has never been better, which is what makes this so exciting. Previous Total Wars have all suffered from various modding issues, bugs, or lack of modding support from Creative Assembly, but Troy is different. Troy is the pinnacle of modability for Total War games, and with its launch on Steam, we can absolutely expect some fantastic mods to start churning out. One thing I do want to point out in the article, though, is that CA wants to eventually create a Total War game that is completely moddable. Wow. And that's it for today, guys. I wanted to make this video today to show you that Total War has come a long way for modders, that Troy has a lot of potential, and we have a lot to be excited for. I don't mean to hype it up the way literally everyone did for Rome Remastered, but I think there is cause for hope when it comes to what can be done with Troy. Hope you enjoyed this video guys and found it informative. If you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. What mods do you want to see for a Total War Saga Troy? Subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay, and news, and thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.